Okay, great. So we're, we're now live. Um, and uh, thank you very much, Sandra, for, for joining us in this Google Hangout. This is, is really an opportunity um, for, for me to ask you lots of questions because I'm very curious about, about what you're doing and I'm very curious about uh, as well about data journalism in, uh, in Argentina and in South America more generally. Um, and data journalism outside of, of the kind of Anglo-American sphere where you know I think uh, most of the writing about data journalism is, is focused on that and, and there's uh, lots of different and, and very interesting experiences outside of that. So, um, so what, just to introduce Sandra for those of you in this hangout, I know some people are um, watching this uh, on on YouTube, some people watching it on, on Google Plus and also this video will be stored on YouTube for later as well so people can watch this later. Um, so a number of my students will be will be watching this later as well. So Sandra you know uh, had a fellowship to look at um, putting data teams into news organizations and that's really all I want to say by way of introduction. Sandra, would you tell us a bit more about that fellowship and, and how that came about? Uh, thank you, Paul, for the introduction. Oh, well, I think uh, my fellowship with the International Center for Journalists changed my life, definitely. Because I live not in Buenos Aires, uh, I'm not working in a large media, I live in Bahia Blanca City that is very far from, from Buenos Aires. Is a me medium city, uh, so to go to Buenos Aires and to go to another big cities um, to build uh, data teams into newsroom and integrate it to the um, graph edition or print editions and dig digital edition. You know, in Latin America, the editions of the papers are. Um, uh, are not one, huh? not working uh, as a same team. So you have in a newsroom people working for the print edition and in another uh, side of the, the newsroom people working for digital uh, newsroom uh, for the digital products. So in the beginnings three years ago, well in Argentina it was so hard because when I arrived to La Nación newspaper in Buenos Aires, I found a team with three people, an engineer, a data miner, and, and, and the manager of the project, but no journalist. So um, uh, the process was hard because uh, and, and working in different levels uh, of the building, not in the newsroom. So um, the work were, uh, you know Momi Peralta Ramos, I suppose, um, they are opening data. Uh, they found interesting data in chat for, uh, format and open it. And where are the stories? So you need journalists to do that. So, well, my first job was go to the newsroom, speak first with the editor, explain uh, that data journalist is basically investigative journals uh, with some new tools with the big large um, uh, quantities of data and that we need the help of people that never have been in the newsroom. For example, data miners, you need data analysis, designers, on programmers or developers. So. Uh, it was hard at the beginning because I remember that some people look at me as no, what she's talking about, data journalism. All, we all, the life, we are working with data. What are you talking about? Oh, wow, but it's not a few data, it's a big, big quantity of data. Um, a lot, a lot of tables in the world we live. Uh, all the things expressed in numbers, using numbers, um, budgets, statistics, uh, things about healthy education, what the government uh, do with our money, the money of our taxes. So it's very important that the journalists 
can see or can find the new behind the, the numbers. For example, one thing, I said, oh, look at this table, yes? What do you see on numbers and, and cells? Oh, no, 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 look at be, very well. Look at two times or three times. Take, take a minute. Can you find the news? No, I can find. So we need to work about that. Because in, in, in data journalists, that, that, that's the exact name. I, I prefer to, 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 to talk about data driven journalism or database uh, journalism. Um, sorry for my English, it isn't perfect. Eh? <laughs> it's because I'm not practiced. So, but you understand. Yes, yeah, absolutely. No, you're you <laughs> very, very clear. Well, I, so, uh, oh no, the thing I can read it without problem, but uh, no practice here, so it's so, bit, so difficult for me. But uh, con uh, following with this explanation, um, um, the first thing I remember I do is to show case of impact. Uh, I remember I saw what the Guardian in England uh, was doing. I remember I, I I was following the people of ProPublica in the United States and the New York Times and the Washington Post and the Seattle Times. I remember uh, uh, an article of the Seattle Times about Methadona uh, that won the, the, the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, uh, it calls the Methadona uh, uh, and, the, and the doctors of the pain. I, I don't know the remember I don't remember the, the title exactly but uh, uh, I show uh, this case of impact and and tell a story look when you work in traditional investigative journalism you probably uh, start to work with an hypothesis uh, thinking that you have find some something but in data journal it's completely different I can give you 10 20 or uh, a lot of tables and ask for you find the news and you um, work with an open hypothesis you don't know uh, if you are going to find something or not because for example, I am in the teamwork of Panama Papers now. And if you ask me, what do you find, what do you think are going to find? I don't know. I don't know. I begin to look for people, to look for, for uh, companies, to look for uh, millionaires, to look for, to look for. And for example, in the last two weeks, I didn't find anything. Is that bad? No. As the things that will be happening in the next year, probably we need to um, insist one time and another time until, oh, surprise, I found the news. And in the best way, oh, I found the breaking news. Uh, so that was my first steps in the newsroom. Um, finally, at the, la, at, the, at the end of my fellowship, um, people of the print uh, newsroom in La Nación and, and digital um, newsroom in La Nación uh, were integrated as a team and worked as a project. Uh, this um, data team uh, don't have a lot of journalists working all the time. Uh, I think it's only one, Romina Coleman, and uh, the rest of the journalists um, work by project. Uh, it was a success, very happy with the results, awards, uh, impact, and in Clarín newspaper, um, uh, I did the same, with the same results. So. I talked about this method uh, in Bolivia with the people of El Tiempo, uh, of Bogota City, and the people with uh, Mexico in uh, the Universal uh, newspaper. Well, and I think it works in Latin America because here, you know, 
we don't have a lot of money. If you if you go with the owner of the newspaper and tell me, oh, well, I need these people uh, full time uh, with a <laughs> with a new salary, and then another people, a data miner, a developer, the owner will say, oh no, I can pay for this. Hmm. But but if you use part time uh, developer or a programmer, part time people that know something about Excel. You can do it. You can do it. I am not a data miner, but uh, I learn, hmm? and yeah. now I'm studied SPSS. So <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. I mean, what what sort of division of um, work was there, or has there been? You know, obviously, like you say, you mentioned there are people using. Um, Excel, people who are data miners, people who are programmers. What sorts of skills were needed most uh, within the projects that you worked on? What are the skills they need? Yeah, what skills were most in need? Because, because oh, for example, I mean, to, to give you an example, in it, because there's a lot of data available in the UK, uh, for example. The best uh, important skill, I think, is vocation uh, because um, about how to use a tool I think it's very easy you you open YouTube and put uh, uh, how to convert an format to another format or how to do this thing in Excel or in access and you can learn but the question is a question of attitude it's not uh, how much I know when I began with dig digital journalists ten years ago, I don't remember. For example, in in 2008, I was doing data journalists and I didn't know it. I mean, I read now that articles and see, oh, this is a data journalist because I found a lot of new, a lot of numbers and another numbers, cross it, calculating. Uh, um, a person change and putting graph and putting bars and see what happened. Oh, this is a change because you know there is a relationship between mathematics and news. I know that. <laughs> I think that which is the which is the thing. I don't study uh, journalism because I finished high school during the last. Uh, dictatorship, so no schools of journalism in my city, and I want to be a doctor, and uh, no career of medicine in the university of my city. So I begin to think, and in my house, uh, no money for to go to Buenos Aires, and Buenos Aires is very dangerous in that in, in that year, in 1978. So I began to study in a university here, National of the South, uh, biochemistry. So my academic education became from the biochemistry. So I studied mathematics, physics, chemics. So mm, my view about the things is um, as a viewer, like a science. Eh? So uh, I, I love mathematics. I love science. I love to discover things, to see things that another can see. Um, for example, uh, I like to swim in a sea. But it's most um, interesting for me. Go to the to the deep in the in the in the sea and find a pearl. It's, well, the correct way to say yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's a breaking news. So, um, for example, what? Uh, think of that way. Why a plane that fly is a news? Is that? Uh, is there any relationship with mathematics and statistics? Of course, they are because uh, planes that fly is regular. The average of the of the plane is that most of plane fly. When a plane crash uh, broke the average, mm. change. There's a num there's a change. There's a number that change. So that number is a new. In the most of cases, 
When you put a lot of numbers in a table and see on a broken line, when you uh, find uh, a number very high or a number very low, probably there's a new uh, there's a news in in that change. So I found that there is a relationship between changes the uh, uh, mm, the changes change changes in numbers and the concept on the on new well that's I think probably I must be far a fool but I, I don't know I, I I think about it <laughs> no yeah I, 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 I agree I think um, I often think the difference between science and how scientists look at numbers and how journalists look at numbers is that scientists are not interested in outliers they're interested in general patterns and and trends and and correlations and so on most of the time journalists are interested in those little dots that are, that are different to all the other ones. Why is that person, you know, uh, or that drug or whatever it is, or that plane. Um, but I love the plane analogy of uh, <laughs> planes <laughs> fly on average. Um, a model. But I, think, I think in the future most of journalists, um, I know that, for ex I don't know what happened in England, but in, in, Latin, in Latin America, in the universities, the professors teach a math and a statistic, but in a, on a theory way, not in a practical way. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work. Uh, I think that uh, in the present, uh, in the present, uh, most of journalists began the career in the university because they hate mathematics. So, um, well, things are different now. You need to love mathematics or learn to love mathematics uh, to be a journalist now because you will need it. And, and to what degree do you think, uh, you know, you, you mentioned the aptitude in terms of, um, of being able to, you know, identify and learn skills to solve a particular problem. To what degree do you think there's a, there's a computational mindset? This, you know, there's a, one thing I've noticed is, um, you know, breaking down problems and working out the most efficient logical way of tackling a big investigation, for example, and you're dealing with lots of documents, you know, um, that, that's a, that kind of programmatic thinking, do you see people who struggle with that, with, 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 with being able to, to look at a, a, a news project in that sort of logical way? That, uh, do you think about the age of the journalist? No, the not necessarily. Attitude, the attitude of more, the More of about a, a mental approach, uh, you know, kind of uh, people who are very logical and, and methodical and people who um, who might not be able to break down a problem in that way. You know, you know when, you, when you're dealing with these sorts of problems, you, you're breaking them down into, well, I need to solve that problem first and then that problem, and, and I need a well, computer to do these steps. Yeah. Uh, and it's best to, to to begin with baby steps. But I don't know if I understand completely your question. But uh, about the attitude, um, it not depends the genders. It not depends of how much I know skills. It not depends. The money, because there are a lot of free tools, it not depends. Or I don't know what depends. I, I I think that data journalism is not for every journalist. You need to be patient. Uh, you need to be persistent. I I know a lot of people that are in my career very very smart, but this is not a work for smart people. This is a uh, work for um, perseverant people, people mm -hmm. that uh, sit in front of the computer working one time and another time, and it doesn't matter if I don't find the news, no matter. Uh, mm -hmm. Start again and start again and start again. A special kind of people. I don't know that people is great. Huh? That's what, that's what I do, but uh, I, I don't know if you, I, I don't know if I do well, but I insist, and insist is the key. 
and mm. says one time and another time, it not depends on the age, because I'm 55 years, so uh, uh, I, I'm not young. So my daughter has 30 years, is married, so in, in, uh, uh, probably I will be a grandmother <laughs> very early. So, uh, yeah, and I, I want to learn more more and I love digital tools uh, and uh, for example I know that I need to know more about code huh? about the language of the programmation not to to convert a developer not because it's another profession but I need to understand how some uh, program um, uh, language works I need to know the, the 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 difference between Ruby and Python. I need to know something about Java, uh, something about HLT. Uh, you, you know, uh, so I, I am taking courses online, free online, or to get uh, uh, view, um, videos on YouTube or on Vimeo about code and how to put uh, correct iFram. Uh, 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 on 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 my website, uh, mm, I'm trying. For example, I don't know is the answer what you expect <laughs> because I'm afraid I don't understand very well the question. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I um, no, I do, I don't understand. I, 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 what's really interesting is what you say about persistence, and you know, I, yeah. earlier you said about data journalism. Uh, being investigative journalism, and I think I differ a bit with you on that. Where I, I think a lot of data journalism isn't necessarily investigative, but I think what you hit the nail on the head with is that data journalism often requires persistence, and so does investigative journalism. So as a result, you've got that natural kind of. I, I think someone who who is good at data journalism is is going to be quite suitable for that persistence for investigative work. Uh, requires and also the point you made about sometimes there is you know you dig and you dig and there is no story and that willingness to take a risk and, and the willingness to that there might not be a story is again something that I think distinguishes investigative work from routine predictable um, uh, safer journalism you know where, where you're more relying on the story but I'd, I'd like to switch a little bit now and talk a bit more broadly about open data in, in Latin America. Would, would you tell us a bit more about the, the situation? You know, what, how has that changed? You know, where is it changing? Um, what is the open data uh, situation like yeah. now? Well, well uh, it's different uh, if I compare uh, with another country. Because, um, for example, in Mexico, Brazil, Chile, and Uruguay, these countries um, are in the front of the line because they start uh, four years ago joining to the Open Government Partnership. Uh, uh, they promise a lot of things and they do a lot of things, but I must be honest, uh, it's not where, uh, where I expect the quality of the data sets. Because, for example, uh, I was in, in Chile uh, last uh, week and I was in Mexico uh, last month um, uh, and I opened data sets and, for example, I found um, incomplete data, data sets um, uh, in, a, in appropriate uh, format. Mm. If you are an open government, you cannot put the data uh, using only one format. You need to use the most open formats you could and uh, the, the data set must be clean. Uh, for example, um, I found that important data sets only in JSON format and if a, a, a journalist uh, found that, so what is this? I don't know. So yeah. I, I go from here. And the another question, the another problem in Latin America is the governments are opening data, opening data, and, oh, and nobody uses it because the journalists in the newsroom don't know how to do it. So, uh, and I think 
I don't know exactly is a problem of journalists. I begin to think that it's a problem of the of the bosses of the journalists. Because uh, we were training journalism, journalists, but no training uh, editors. Mm -hmm. So the editors don't understand what they're going to do with this open government, data sets, uh, Socrates, Hikan, Junar, but, uh, uh, what is this? What, uh, what is the title? No, I have not any title. You must wait. I need to work on that. Oh no, I can't wait because this is. Uh, I need a news for the for the next hour. You must learn to wait. So, uh, mm -hmm. but um, the editors uh, must understand that uh, this is a process and probably will be more necessary to train uh, to train the editors in the newsroom, the journalists. Yeah, so this is, that, that's reality in, in America. Uh, we are opening data, yes, but mm, nobody uses it. Very few per percent of the media use it. Yeah. Do, do you think that the attitudes have changed at all? Into, you know, the more examples there are out there of, um, of big data stories or data stories that are significant, um, do you think that makes it easier to pitch stories, do you think editors are starting to understand or at least people within the newsroom are starting to see, to kind of trust a bit more that, there's, that there might be a, a good story there? Oh, I think the new generations, the people more young are different. Uh, when you show a case of impact, for example here in Bahia Blanca I cross the data uh, in the, uh, with the number of the identification of the car uh, 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 about the politics in my city uh, with a register uh, of infractions. Infractions uh, when they drive and, and um, don't, do, don't do it very well. Yeah. So I think that the, the politics that most um, don't drive very well and uh, uh, cameras in the street caption that uh, is a director of the transit office <laughs> so, yeah. and and don't pay for, and don't pay for it I don't know mm. how to say multa in English huh? the fines. yeah yeah six uh, five years without pay to the to the um, to the government for that and uh, Two or three months, months later, a group of young um, journalists in another media that is a traditional media in, in this uh, city, La Nueva, uh, use the same method to, um, uh, to put in, uh, in the stage all politics, not only one. Eh? Yes, yeah. and 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 inspire. I, I think that the people that are working on that we can inspire the new generation and the keep could it be show uh, cases of impact. But it's a process. I think it is a project. Uh, almost, I need to say that data journalists will not give solution for all the problems we have in the newsroom. Is only a part of it. Hmm? Yeah. Probably a lot of investiga uh, investigative stories we need to to use the traditional ways. Uh, but uh, probably in the future we have new methods, new new skills. I don't know because the future of the journalist is uncertain. But um, uh, we are on that way. Discover things behind the tables. And you, and you you mentioned about the future and, and, and in in some of our emails before this, you, you know you say that it, it's been difficult to find money and, and funding for this sort of data work. W would you tell me a little bit about that and, and about the process of trying to find some sort of sustainability around this? You know, yeah, your question is very, very interesting because all the people are looking for the business model. Do you think 
do you know what I think that the business model doesn't exist? I think the journalist will be a service. And you need to, to, to have another business to pay for the journalist you want to do. For example, my husband and I have Solo Local Point Info. It's a hyperlocal site with bases only in digital, in digital sources. So we found in this market, <laughs> when, I, when I hear the, the, the business models in big cities, but, but I, I can apply your business model here because here is very little, no market, eh? no market. Uh, less than half a million people living here. Mm -hmm. So, and this is an industrial uh, city. The commerce, uh, the people with money, don't put uh, money, don't interested to put uh, their money uh, on new media. So, oh well, in the beginning we we were doing for free. So, uh, what we do, learn, learn to. To how to do, how to research data, how to clean data sets, how uh, to find news in documents, how to use tools, and now um, we our business models uh, is to to be consult consultants. Hmm? Yeah, uh, I travel for all Latin America. Also, Europe. I was in Lebanon, in Tunis, in uh, in Madrid, in in Italy, uh, working to little media and, and and middle media. How to do it with um, low cost uh, and with free tools like Google Fusion Tables, uh, uh, using Google Drive, you don't need to pay for Socrata, you don't need to pay for Nitro for to, to, to do scrapping data, you can do it on that way. Uh, so, um, the business model, uh, at least for me, doesn't exist. It exists my, my, um, my volunteer, uh, my 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 love for the profession, my love for journalists, my love for to discover things, my love for to see the, the people that another journalist can see, uh, my, my uh, the love of I feel when I discover something new, and the another college said to me, "Where do you find that?" In my, in my computer, <laughs> doing numbers. Uh, so it's fascinating. But I think in the future, uh, model, for, for example, advertisement, publisher, advert, advertisement uh, model. Uh, it, uh, uh, it will be a long work in the future. Uh, I, I think the, the world go because there is a culture for free in this moment. For example, I cross funding. Oh, yes. I, I was trying during three years crowdfunding, but nobody wants to pay for content journalists because there is a free culture now. I am in the, in the, in the cell and have all for free. I don't want to pay and nobody wants to pay for products. For example, here, I don't know in Europe but, or in the United States, but here nobody wants to pay. Even with the, with the programs, most, for example, oh, uh, you need um, you need uh, some program, Adobe Acrobat Pro, for example, because you can do OCR, we do an export, a PDF to Excel. Oh, interesting. And how much is, oh, yes, uh, $100. Oh, no, 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 I can pay for it. I need a free tool. So that's the way we think uh, so it, it, with, with the societies, with the culture free. Uh, mm, very near uh, in us, uh, it's impossible to think in crowdfunding or another model for sustained media. And and there is no philanthropy here. Mm. You in your countries have philanthropy. In America Latina, in Latin America, well, let me see, millionaires mm. are not good people in general. Sorry. <laughs> I think. Oh, I mean. I mean 
I was going to say, I mean, actually, there's there's philanthropy in the in the US, but in the UK, there isn't really. I mean, that the, there is okay. the, the there's the, the, um, not in terms of journalism because journalism doesn't qualify for charitable oh, status. Probably, um, but I see in the United States. Yeah, I, I think it's because yeah. of it, it's the difference between. Um, how uh, how journalism is seen in terms of charitable status, tax status. Uh, in the UK, there, have, there is very early discussions uh, about trying to get journalism some sort of charitable status. Um, but the only philanthropy in the UK is the, the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, that's funded by a foundation. Um, but all the other kind of philanthropic uh, organizations tend to focus, although they're based in the UK, they'll, base, they'll look at journalism outside of the UK in, in, in um, places like Africa. Um, but I, I mean, crowdfunding, I think I agree with you about advertising. I, I think that that's kind of going in a different direction. And, yeah. But I think crowdfunding can work on individual stories. We, we had a student who raised about $6,000 to do an investigation into an unsolved murder. Um, and and that was really positive, and and I've seen other kind of people that I've trained raising money for individual stories through crowdfunding. But um, I think it's I think it's much harder to crowdfund for an ongoing project, um, and and that means you've then got to invest effort in crowdfunding for each story each time and keep going back. Um, so I think I think that raises a, an issue in terms of sustainability and kind of. Um, being able to plan further ahead, but um, um, I, I'm uh, going to give. Where, where, where the people interact more in your country? For example, uh, the editors ask, "What about the metrics?" Because the metrics of data journalists are low, and in fact, uh, I don't know in the United States, but uh, in Latin America, are low. Uh, um, you, you mean so, that people? You mean that, that that data journalism gets fewer page yeah. views? Really? Yeah, yeah. So I found that the people is more um, uh, more interaction when you talk about numbers that affect the life of the people. I found that interactivity discussion um, is more intense. In Facebook, that in in the plat in the web platforms of the media, mm. uh, I don't know why. People, uh, I have a, a, a thousand people follow me in my Facebook page, and for example, now that the cost of the energy uh, will increase four hundred percent. All the people are angry. I am angry because it's a huge, huge increase. Increase. Uh, so well, the people are debating. The people are. But this, the, the same. You go for the media, the digital media, and it's, uh, you can find twenty commentaries or thirty. And in my page, there. Are Hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a replay and 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 share and share and it surprised me. Something will be happen with Facebook um, because Twitter is more real time. What is happening now? But the interaction between the audience and the content of the products we, we made, uh, the discussion will be on Facebook. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm going to invite my students um, to ask some questions in a moment. So I'm going to. Oh, okay. Um, we've got Carla and Maria in at the okay. moment uh, muted. So I'll give them a little bit of advance warning. Yeah. Before I go to them, but um, is is, is there, are there any other kind of issues in? Uh, well, I guess what what do you think of the of the good things that are happening now? Um, and also, before you say that, it, it, it's interesting when you to, to tackle the engagement thing. There's evidence of one of the reasons I think that that um, American organisations and British organisations are focusing a lot on data journalism is very high metrics. So people uh, sharing data journalism stories a lot, um, engaging with them a lot. Um, so I'm curious why that isn't the case. Uh, with, with your experience and whether it's 
a difference in audience or a difference in writing style? I, I don't know if you have any ideas about that. I don't know exactly. I don't know. I, I think it's very difficult to have an answer for that because it depends uh, of a lot of factors, of a lot of realities. Uh, for example, the first time I, arri I arrived to Bolivia uh, to talk about the journal, I couldn't imagine that I will f I, I, I find a, a group with uh, high expectatives and high interesting and now Bolivia had you know, two, three data teams um, and, and are competing with the big media in, 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 in another countries. Uh, I don't know. Mm, maybe it depends of the, of the people. Uh, it's not a question of environment. It's not a question of money. Of, uh, it depends of, of people. Um, but uh, I think that um, that uh, we we can look surprised, uh, find surprise all the time. I am surprised uh, uh, all the time uh, in the place where you you where you less expect. Yeah. I'm going, to, I'm going to open up and see, this is where we get the awkward silence moment as I, as I wait for a question. So, um, so to Carla and Maria, uh, who are muted, I'm assuming they're there and they've not just, you know, muted their, their microphones and their cameras and walked off and, 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 uh, and disappeared. So and, uh, does anyone have any questions for Sandra? And speak slowly, please. <laughs> <laughs> You no, hear? I can hear. They're, they're very quiet. Um, maybe I've just asked all the questions. They are bored. <laughs> I will. Uh, um, let me see if anyone's asked any questions on the actual page itself. Um, oh yes, I have good message. I've shared on the chat, on the group chat, I've, I've shared a link to that Seattle investigation that you mentioned. What was the open data project you mentioned right at the start? You said there was a, a, an open data uh, organization in Argentina or a, a pressure group. Uh, sorry, uh, I can hear you very, I can hear you, my sound is, can you repeat the, can you yeah. repeat, yeah. Yeah, uh, you mentioned right at the start an open data group. Um, can you tell no, no, me? No, no, no. I told you about what? An open data group. Yeah. Who, who was uh, that again? Open data group in Argentina? There's a lot in media. Are you referring to media or in organizations? I think it was outside of media. You, you named um, one in particular, but I, I can't remember what the name was now. You said you've I'm probably afraid. heard of. I'm afraid I don't understand, so sorry. I'll, Can, I'll you go write? Back. Can you write by the message? No, I'll, I'll, I'll I... go back and after we've done this, I'll go back okay. in the video and, and find uh, that part and, and, uh, and I'll send the link. Um, okay, well, if no one has any questions then, I think. No, are the, all are quiet. <laughs> yes, they're not normally quiet. I, I'll, I'll, uh, oh, so. Probably sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. But uh, to, where where is the city where you are in this moment? In Birmingham, in Birmingham, in Birmingham. which is that's in central England. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and actually, uh, uh, Carla uh, and and Maria um, are both from Spain. Carla's from from Catalonia. Um, and uh, and we have another student from Cuba, so um, so they, they can understand your work better than I can. Uh, they got much better Spanish by a long chalk. So. <laughs> no, but uh, the next year I will go to to India and probably visit Birmingham. So I promise to visit your your students. Oh yes, definitely, definitely. That'd be that'd yeah. be wonderful. I should I, and as it happens, I should have a Mexican, a Brazilian. 
um, and, uh, and at least one Spaniard um, around then, so there will be no. quite a welcoming crowd for you. Because I can show what we did, uh, what methods we use, uh, how works open data in Latin America, who, um, how is the reality in the newsrooms uh, in Latin America is very different. I think it's very different. But um, uh, we are doing um, things interesting. There are young people, uh, hack hackers, movement, hack hackers, uh, powerful girls are all organizations that are working a lot uh, for to introduce the culture of the data in, in the newsrooms uh, and in another type of media. Uh, you don't need necessary to work in a big media. Uh, yeah. You can do it uh, uh, since um, from a blog, hmm? a data blog for example. I always said you need to Start with baby steps. How I start? Uh, put on like the data blog is the most easy way to start and go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, th I, I think that's something that uh, you know. I'll have to. I'll send you some links actually to some of the students' work, which is quite quite wonderful on that front. Um, I have had a question. It's come through Slack. We've got so many channels here. I'm kind of checking Twitter. Check in the Google Plus page, and um, and the messages come through on my phone from Johanna, who's who's tuning in uh, to the live stream on the video. She she wants to ask, um, do you have any experience with data journalism uh, cross border collaborations? She's watching on the train as well, by the way. <laughs> oh yes, yes, I have two examples. Um, well, uh, one has happened in. Uh, in, between Argentina and Paraguay, uh, two journalists sharing data uh, about problems in the borders um, uh, with um, migrant situations and um, um, problems uh, with some um, 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 the control of the law. Uh, about the products that enter and out of each country. And uh, there are a lot of uh, problems with borders in Latin America. Uh, that, um, Paraguay, between Paraguay and Argentina, between Brazil and Argentina are problems. Between Bolivia and Argentina are problems. But uh, in Mexico, for example, I was working in, in Sinaloa during two years. I went here a lot of times uh, to listen to the, the, the journalist of uh, Culiacán City, a very dangerous uh, uh, place because um, the n narco and drugs uh, cartel of Sinaloa are there. And um, uh, we learn a lot of things together about uh, how to produce content to help um, journalists that are working uh, very near uh, of the borders. Uh, one way is to do the work very far from the very far from the border and publish very far from the border and not to put in danger the journalist that is near the, the border. So um, uh, I can send you a link with some examples. What kind of 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 work, uh, what we're doing? What yes, we were doing? Yeah. That'd be great. Um, mm. I think I will leave it there then because I've not had any more questions through Slack, and, okay. I, and I think we've we've probably been going for for certainly. Um, at least three quarters of an hour. So thank you very much for, for your time. Thank you to you for the invitation. It's an honor <laughs> oh, for me. You. Thank you to me. Imagine <laughs> I live in a very, very, very small city, very far from everything, <laughs> from every people, and um, I feel so great. It seems I feel so great that you you can call me and your students can <laughs> hear me. I'm very happy for that. Well, it's, it's wonderful, and, and if, if you do come to Birmingham next year, you, you'll have a very warm welcome, I think, and um, 
and it, it's it's wonderful to see what you what you're doing. It's wonderful to be able to. I, I think this kind yeah. of the global community of data mm -hmm. journalism is 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 quite incredible sometimes. So it's it's lovely to be a part of that. Thank you. And okay. I promise to visit your students in Birmingham <laughs> next Abs year. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Just don't complain about the coffee. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, bye, and thank you for every everybody for to hear this and share uh, this conversation with Paul. Uh, it was very pleasure for me. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Sandra. Bye bye. Bye bye, Paul. <laughs>